save. Yes. Okay, cool. It's done now. Don't worry. <laughs> I was never worried. I have the ultimate faith in you. I'm glad someone does. I'm glad <laughs> someone does. Alrighty, yeah, here we go. Going into Kolodny. Yeah, so many maps on uh, Kolodny, and I think because of the uh, kind of the standard Vitas at the moment, it's becoming a really popular map. The games are fairly even as well, uh, and they are quite interesting, just given the fact that there's loads of avenues of attack. Alrighty, so here we go. We have the... Uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is the first or second game. If it is the second game, they started their uh, second game very, very quickly after the first one. Um, so I will get a moderator to confirm the scores at the moment. I don't know if it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Perhaps someone will pop up in chat and uh, tell me, and at that point I will update the scores. But Theodosis playing as the USF. He's going to be taking on Cruzy, playing as the Ostir uh, from the western side of Kolodny Firma. Indeed, right. It is a pleasure to be here with you today, Stormless. I'm enjoying our casting experience so far. It's a nice un unexpected one as well, you know. So. Yes, exactly, yeah, oh, yeah. You weren't ready for it, were you? I wasn't ready for yeah, it, so no. No, no yeah. way, no way Arkonhawk's going to be casting, but... Uh, we uh, haven't really done the practice either, so it's like, you know, it's it's edgy. It's edgy, but we have natural chemistry. Uh, and I think that certainly counts for something. I mean, I don't think you and the machine just have the, the same personal connection uh, that you and me have. We just we, we just uh, feel it more. I can't wait to see what Twitch chat's going to do with this conversation. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> So anyway, pretty standard builds coming in uh, for both players at the moment. I think we're probably going to see the Triple Rifleman and Theodosis, although he's pushed quite far up to a, a, a strong building on this map. It looks like he's going to go straight for the fuel, maybe get into a cover position there, but he's going to be met with the MG42, most likely going to cause a retreat. Uh, I think that's a bad decision. I think he should have gone for the house, and now the house probably going to get taken by Grenadiers. Yes, it will. Um, so not a fan of that first... That first uh, First capping order from Theodosis there. Yeah, not amazing. I certainly agree with you, uh, Stormus. There's a reason that the bottom player goes for this house if he decides to cap in this direction. Uh, and that that's the reason. You, you run into squads. Grenadiers can get into the house. It's just it's so easy to lose. Uh, yeah, there, <laughs> there, there's a reason we have set capping orders. Uh, slams fist down on the table uh, in dramatic fashion. <laughs> There's a reason that people cap in certain and specific orders depending on uh, which side they're playing on on which map, and that is the, a very clear indication of why. You uh, you can't go mucking around looking for a, a faraway fuel point. No, no, that's very true. At the start of the game, you need to get pivotal positions and not points that you're not going to be able to connect anyway. Um, yeah, that, that was a bad decision. I'm not, I'm not sure why he made it. Mind you, I think uh, Theodosis, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, unless I'm confusing it with Thanatos, but I'm pretty sure it was Theodosis playing last week. One of them, anyway. Lost a couple of Grens at this stage um, of the competition last week. And I, I kind of put it down to tiredness, uh, but we do know that these guys have played some intense games today. So uh, never ever rule that out of the equation when you get into this stage. People do start doing some... Strange strategy, uh, strategies. It certainly can be draining, uh, playing for a long period of time. And uh, yeah, Company Pros 2 tends to be more draining than a lot of other RTS games. Uh, it it really stretches your 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 mind. Kind of when you when you're playing other games, a lot of games you you kind of play. Uh, by feeling, by, by reflex. Like, if you're playing FPS, for example, you, you shoot things, you know, whatever. If you're playing a, a faster-paced RTS game, you're just kind of flowing with it. With Company of Heroes 2, you're constantly thinking, uh, and that constant thinking, in addition to the, the regular micro, uh, it's, it's about the decision-making that, that's so draining on your, your mental capacity. We see that a lot in the longer tournaments, that the longer they go on, players just start making mistakes even really, really experienced players start making mistakes because they've had to, to think for such a long period of time over the course of the tournament uh, and really make uh, very, very, you know, conscious and, you know, well thought out decisions, which, which can be hard. So it's a sniper actually uh, opening up here for Cruz as well. And this is this is much earlier. And I like this, this, uh, this timing for a sniper, especially against USF. Yeah, it's a really powerful one as well. USF can't really get in close enough at the moment. Mortar looks like it's focusing on the sniper's location rather than clearing out the grenadiers, but Cruzy is um, actually pretty managing to avoid them anyway. It's quite important that he does 
Rifleman pushing up on these Pioneers. Get the kill as well! Bruzy actually loses Pioneers at the start of this game, and that's going to be devastating for him, really. He has to rebuild that now if he's going to be able to tech up. And that's 200 manpower that Axis really need at the start of a game. That's nearly another squad of Grenadiers or a Mortar in this situation. So great start for Theodosis. It's a really nasty early squad loss uh, for Cruz. Not a good stage to be lo losing a squad, especially if you open Sniper. Uh, it's brutal. I mean, it's the, the manpower investment, and then your, your, your other squads are going to be late, or your med bunkers are going to be late, and uh, Cruz really needs a med bunker here. Uh, sniper's already down on half health. And with the mortar out on the field here for, for Theodosis, the, uh, the sniper's going to be in severe danger. Uh, US mortar really does put some serious pressure on infantry squads, and especially the four-man squads as well. Theodosis just pulls out a lone rifleman from getting sniped in the church. Now the sniper's feeling a little bit confident to push up for some vision. Actually loses control of the church now. Rifleman and the captain going to have to engage it from behind heavy cover. It's going to force the uh, retreat of that mortar. Uh, Grenadier squad's coming in as well for support. Cruzy looking really good in terms of his map control here. Cruz actually decides to go for the, the tech up here and... Oh, he goes for an... That's an odd choice. He decides to go for an LMG upgrade on this Grenadier squad when he doesn't have a med bunker and three of his squads are down on about half health. Yeah, this uh, is a difficult one. I, I think as well, because USF doesn't have that either, he may get away for um, get away with it from the, for the moment. The sniper is also one of the benefits there because um, you know the, the, the sniper is just pot shotting units. It's not really on the front lines either. So I think he's kind of got that added benefit. But yeah, you're definitely right. The med bunker would be a, a real uh, preferred choice here, just to make sure that he's always comfortably winning engagements. Yeah, for sure. I was just just risking manpower bleed, uh, and the Stuart's almost here as well. Uh, and having low health squads against the Stuart, that's uh, very very dangerous. Theodosis, oh, he's not attack moving here. Rifleman squads actually run into the negative cover for a period, but that's alright. The Grenadiers were low, and they're going to be forced to retreat here. We'll have a squad back at home if he decides to build that bunker. Wait, it's a, f it's a flamer and an LMG, and still no med bunker. Yeah, I can't say I, I can't say I agree with this. Cruz is going to just start trading so so inefficiently. It really runs the risk of, of losing squads now that the Stuart's out on the field. It's one of those things with um, one of those things with Cruz is like I never want to question what he's doing because there's been a number of t times where he's like really surprised me with his builds. Um, oh, you know, to, to stand by logical reason, I mean, yeah, it doesn't make too much sense, does it? But you know, I'm sure there's always something up his sleeve. <laughs> always do. Look, I have faith in you, uh, Stormless. If if you say it, I believe it. And uh, Cruz is going to be building the uh, the bunker now. Uh, well, so you know, I realise you didn't get the opportunity to cast the EU side of ESL, so you probably wouldn't have seen that side to Cruz. Not a uh, lot, no. This, precisely, yeah. and I mean, some of the builds that he did. I mean, I just remember one for Brits on Crossing in the Woods, which is downright ridiculous. Up until this one point where it just became unstoppable and um, you know he's one of these people he's he knows a lot about the game and I always think you know someone with that kind of knowledge really knows what he's doing in these situations for sure, for I've sure. always found him a very very hard player to make analysis for because he, he does surprise you very cool he's looking towards Theo now Stuart's starting to put some pressure on across the map Ambo is of course out and has started the healing, and uh, to Cruz's credit, he's playing very intelligently. He's not he's not looking for engagements with these low-health Grenadier squads. He kind of sees a Rarishon squad running up, and it's just it's not worth it. I'm not going to take the manpower bleed. I'm just going to retreat. And he, he hasn't really suffered in by not having this medic bunker. He's lost a bit of map control, but he hasn't bled manpower, and that's the important thing, especially when you drop a squad early, in the case of those Pioneers. Uh... It's really important that you, uh, that you don't bleed manpower, and he hasn't been doing that, so uh, I do love seeing it. Well, interested to see where Cruz is going to go here. I wonder if we're going to see a mobile defense pick 
Uh, you know, this far on the back foot, limited fuel, only the one fuel point and uh, two strategic points at the moment. May really consider going for Puma just to try and push off the Stuart and get enough fuel to tech. Uh, that being said, you know, it's one of those really dangerous picks I find where you can just get stuck into using Puma after Puma until, you know, you, <laughs> you just don't have the fuel for anything more reliable. And I always think that's a really sticky position for us to... Um, but we'll see. I mean, it may be one of those games where he has to call it out. That's one of the things that USF can really do. They can roll you into that position uh, quite effectively. They certainly can. So Stormless. So Cruz will be going for a pack. Pretty necessary with that Stuart out on the field. Don't see a lot of map control here for Cruz. That really has struggled to get much back. The pack certainly could give him that opportunity. Stuart's been playing very safe as well. Uh, hasn't been chasing these squads. Hasn't really been going on the road. So has obviously been avoiding any potential telemine spots. Uh, hasn't been caught out by a pack, which is nice to see. Captain's going to be good support here as well, and it has a, unlocked the M9 Bazooka on that squad. Uh, so we give Theodosis a little bit of extra AT, a little bit of extra threat to uh, combine with the Stuart. Very, very fragile game at the moment. Chrissy is well not able to capture fuel on his side at the moment either. Uh, he hasn't been. Keeps being uh, dissuaded by this steward every time he tries to send a squad up there to cap. Well, Theodosis actually has a really good grip everywhere. I mean, two riflemen at the moment pressuring the South VP. They they kind of went there around the same time. Not sure if he had vision and knew that was coming, or whether he's just splitting up his forces um, to represent where he thinks the threats are going to come in. Nevertheless, I mean, he's very, very on point with, with where he's sending his units, and he's always able to counter in these situations. Krizzy has just locked in the mechanized assault doctrine for us there, so uh, Stug E's probably going to be on the field. Yeah, not a bad choice uh, coming in here from Cruz. Stug E's, I mean, he's not going to have to look for tech anytime soon. Uh, we're going to save him a bit of fuel. Uh, obviously, can head up towards that tiger. It certainly is a a build that can work, especially with the uh, the units he has at the moment. You know, has that MG for sport, has the mortar, has the pack. Uh, a couple of Grenadier squads and the, the Pigrens as well. Uh, enough to stall out until he can get to the Tiger stage after these Stoogies. Oh, look at this flank from the Stuart, though. Pulling out some damage onto the Panzer Grenadiers. Countered by an AT gun, they will be forced to retreat there a little bit. And a squad of riflemen has to retreat right through the center of the map here. Can the sniper get that last shot? Cruzy lining up for it, I think. Why hasn't he taken the shot? Fortunately, Panzer Grenadiers finish it off. And now there's a bar to claim as well. So these little engagements can be very, very, uh, very, very swaying, actually. If he gets some of the pickups here, of course, denying bar from the rifleman and picking it up from himself, can start to turn some of these engagements into his favor. Yeah, one of the first bars of the game as well for Theo. It's got to hurt. You, uh, you spend the money to unlock bars, you pick up a bar, and then you drop a bar on a rifleman squad and give it over to a grenadier. It's, uh, it's not fantastic. So no, I is believe still... the Grenadiers can still upgrade to their LMG as well. I believe they that. can, yeah. Uh, yeah, Let I believe check. they can. I'm pretty sure they can. I'm pretty sure you can have a. I'm pretty sure I've had bar LMG Grenadiers before. Um, yeah, I'm fairly sure they still have a, a weapon stop to pick up a bar. Well, I'll check it out when they get out of this house. But I'm quite confident they can. They yeah. do become a, a real machine. Let me have a look. Must be in territory. Yes, they can. They can upgrade again. So that that will be an absolute death death squad. Um, when that comes in, so really great pickup, and of course a good decision. Um, I'm not sure you can pick up. I'm not sure you can pick up weapons when you've upgraded. Is that right? Pretty sure you can actually. I mean, I definitely had. Um, what I like to see the uh, the the all rangers grenadier squad, where you have the LMG and the flamer as well. And I'm pretty sure I had the LMG first, and then I just just picked up a flamer. I said yeah. <laughs> This, this looks good. This, sh this should be fun. I'll need to do some confirmation on that. Yeah, time. I think anyway, you will. It's going yeah. to be a, a very good squad at the very least. And uh, Cruzy has a couple of things on his side now that are really going to help him. Just wondering how he's going to maneuver this. He has been attacking the south still a little bit. Probably wants to consider moving over to the north side where he gets uh, some really good lines for the AT. Really good defense then. Of course, Scout Car nearing its veterancy too as well. Will provide great sight for the Mortar, for the Sniper. Potential Stiggies later on into the game. 
It certainly will. So Majors out in the field now, uh, fourth there. Gonna have to be retreating that one, and uh, it's nice for Cruz because he sees where the tech is heading. Uh, for Theo. Probably could have made an assumption, but at least now he's got a, a pretty good idea of what uh, Theodosis is thinking. It's always nice to know what your your opponent is going for. Gives you just a little bit of peace of mind. It's nice to see Caruzzi uh, having control over his fuel point now. If he could just keep a hold of the fuel and munitions, that's the main thing for him. Looking towards our VPs, 400 for Theodosis. Cruise down to 334. Sniper's being very, very bold here. May pop out of cover whilst the Stuart is there. That's going to need to retreat. Pioneers jump into the church. Very, very low health there. And they may be trying to bait here for the AT gun, which Cruzy left quite sensibly at the strategic point there. Very, very good position for that AT gun because it is able to respond uh, both north and south on those VPs as it needs to. Uh, so a really good position to respond to that Stuart correctly. Yeah, there's a nice bait coming in there. Doesn't end up coming to fruition. Theodosis banking up the fuel now as well. Should be looking pretty good. And yeah, there's the Sherman. I was going to say, he has the, the, the fuel for it and is now actually going for it. Mortigan's taken quite low as well. It's going to be forced away. I have the MG42 going to be stressing one rifleman squad. Uh, there is the big flank coming through. The MG42, it's facing the wrong way. There are considerably more squads in the north here. First Diggy has just hit the field. Uh, not sure how it's going to match up against that Sherman, though. Currently, AT isn't in a position to deal with the Stuart. Actually, okay. I think that was well well dealt with by Cruzy there, to be honest. The Stuggy's going to really help in the north side now. I would like to see Cruzy maybe dominate that northern side a little bit more. I mean, it's unlikely that... Uh, it's unlikely that Theodosis is going to drive straight through the center VP and go for the base. Yeah, Stuart is actually going to be landing a nice stun here onto the 222. Going to be enough to take it down. Uh, Pigren's not quite coming in in time with those Shreks, uh, and the Stuart could have survived a volley from them. However, the, the Stuggy looks like it wants to chase this one down. It's looking for the Stuart now. Mortar's going to be forced away. However, the Sherman has arrived. And the range of those Shreks, honestly, doing a really good job there, helping to push the Stuart off. Double um, Stuga E's are going to be really good here at pushing back up into the base. The AT gun providing good support against the Sherman. Has lost a, a model already and may go down. And, and of course, that's quite far forward as well. So if that AT gun does go down, it could be very, very bad if Theodosis picks that up, and I think he will do, to be honest. He may lose the Grand Squad. One goes down. Now he's working on the AT gun. It does go down. It's also very well defended. Stugs are in a horrible position, too. German is going, I think, for the crush on the Panzer Grenadiers, who jump into a building to try and get a little bit of defense there. Will they get the last shots off on the Shermans? Doesn't look like it. One Stug E goes down. Great shot from the AT gun there on the right-hand side. Now all of these units have to retreat. It's a very, very bad play from Cruzy there. Completely overstretched. Another Stug E goes down. Looks like he's brought another one onto the field as well. So all of his fuel currently drained on this strategy. That has not worked for him whatsoever. Cruz has pulled out a hatchet. He has hacked a hole in his fuel tank and he's just drained it all onto the ground. And Theodosis says, thank you very much. I'll take both of those Stug E's. Uh, knocks them both down. Sherman does it easily. That was not a good play. That was not a good play at all. The Sherman finds a wipe onto a Grenadier squad at all. This could be the game for Cruz. He's lost two Stug E's at the cost of just the, the one uh, the one Stuart. Oh. Gonna keep firing at this M M M4 Sherman. The Sherman says, I don't have to worry about anything, man. There are, there are no fouls on the field. Where are your fouls at, bro? Where are your fouls at, bro? <laughs> I mean, wow, what an unfortunate engagement there. Cruzy as well, still down on the VPs at this point. He's trying to be efficient with the Stug E. This is, of course, good bait in case that Sherman comes back round again. Yeah, I'd be really upset if Theodosis loses it from this position. Yeah, th there'd, be, uh, there'd be no real excuse to lose it uh, from this spot. You can just go for, for another Sherman. You should be able to close this one out. The play with the Panzer Grenadiers was nice. Getting inside that garrison was really smart. Uh, what we saw there from Theo, who was trying to push the uh, Pigrens at the same time as going for the, the Stugi. So going for the garrison was smart, but 
Uh, Thea just has too many rifleman squads uh, with bars, too much of a threat against these infantry squads. Cruzy surrenders. Yeah. Doesn't even want to give it a go. I yeah, mean, that's a that game thing, was really. over. Especially when you're playing against someone who may have already out microed you, you know, uh, trying to get up to that point again um, can be daunting. But hey, there we go. I think that may be game one. I'm not sure. I didn't see anything in chat that uh, suggested it would be otherwise. So I'll try to get a confirmation from the moderators uh, on which game that was. That would be a good idea. I mean, that could be Cruzy out of the tournament. It could be, yeah. Game, if it's a game two, we don't know at this point. If it was game one. Yeah, so GG. So there are a few problems there. Uh, going all in with the Stoogies, I kind of, I, I get what Cruzy was going for. It was kind of a, all right, look, I'm behind in this game. I see you've got a major. If you get a Sherman out, I'm, I'm probably not going to make it to my Tiger. I could be in some pretty serious trouble. Uh, so he decides to go all in with the Stoogs, but then they, they weren't well microed. Uh, there was certainly the opportunity for Cruz to get out of that one. He could have backed away towards that bottom VP. Instead, he tries to, to run back towards the middle VP, and I'm not sure why. He could have easily just uh, self-retreated out with the, the Panzer Grenadiers in conjunction with the, the Stoogies, and the, the M4C Sherman wouldn't have been able to chase because it would have been against two Stoogies and the Pegrens without Rifleman support because the Rifleman uh, were on the other side of the cutoff, so they wouldn't have got there in time. I have no idea why Cruzy decided to go back towards that central VP. There was a really odd choice with the Stoogies. Ends up throwing both of them away. Uh, ends up throwing away the game as well because that push would have worked. He, he took out the, the Stuart. That was great. Uh, took out an infantry squad as well. Could have backed away at that stage and probably stalled out with another pack uh, when it came to that impulse Sherman and added on the, the Tiger later in the game, but instead he just throws them away. So a little bit unfortunate. So that was game one.